family. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to worship with you. Wherever you are, wherever you're doing, let's stand to our feet and give some praise and worship to God this morning. Amen. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before the lion. And 
Let's continue to worship Him and prepare our hearts to surrender to Him. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every prayer. No 
that we can come before you in your presence Father God so freely Father I ask that you continue to lead us continue to guide us and let us build our foundation on you Father we thank you so much for your love and for your guidance and I pray that you would keep us accountable Father God we love you so much in Jesus name and everyone say Amen Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Before you sit down, greet the person around you with a high five or a wave, and then you may have a seat and enjoy the service.
Welcome everyone, my name is Blaine and I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Windward. Thank you for joining us for service today. In a few moments, we are gonna hear a great message. But before we do, we are gonna take some time to worship God through our giving. Of the 22 ministries and organizations New Hope Winward financially supports, Compassion International is one that has been working nonstop to meet the emergency needs of children and their families all around the world by delivering thousands of food and hygiene packs to homes of Compassion children and their families in many of the hardest hit areas. Several years ago, New Hope Windward started three Compassion Christian schools on the island of Northern Samar in the Philippines, one of the most economically depressed regions. We send thousands of dollars to each of these schools every year to provide food, clothing, education, and healthcare to over 500 children. Most importantly, they and their families learn about having a relationship with Jesus. Recently, your ongoing faithfulness and generosity has enabled our church to fund the construction of a much needed expansion of a children's wing in one of the schools, as they are preparing for many compassionate children to return for education and spiritual development after the pandemic. In fact, the pastor at one of our Compassion Schools recently sent a letter thanking our church for providing all of the construction supplies for the build-out. You truly model after what the Apostle Paul shared about having a heart for the destitute and hurting when he said, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. New Hope Winward, your sacrificial and selfless giving, even during these difficult times, is making a substantial difference in the lives of many impoverished children and their families throughout the world. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. By clicking the button on the upper right-hand corner of your screen, it will take you to our website where you can give a one-time gift or you can have it recurring. Another way to give is by texting the word new donation to the number on your screen and follow the instructions. Or if you prefer to mail in your gift, you can send it to the address below. And if you're joining us for in-person services, you're welcome to drop off your donation in the donation drop box right outside each theater or use the giving kiosk located in the lobby at Regal Theaters. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, despite some of the challenges we face during this pandemic, you remind us that in all seasons, your church is called to rise above adversity, to bring your love and hope to a world that desperately needs it. Thank you for the many at New Hope Windward who maintain your heart to sacrificially and generously give towards those less fortunate and hurting. By doing so, your word says that we will reap an eternal reward when we someday see you face to face. So we give today with eternity in mind. We love you and it's in your gracious name we pray, amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, I wanna welcome you to New Hope Windward. We'd love to keep you informed and updated with all that's going on at New Hope Windward. So you can go ahead and text new gift to 45777 and we'll email you a Starbucks e-gift card as a way of saying welcome to New Hope Windward. Well, can you believe that next weekend is Easter? On Saturday, April 3rd and Sunday, April 4th, we will be celebrating Easter at both in-person services and online during the following service times. So be sure to invite your family and friends to join us for an amazing time of great worship, powerful dance, and an inspiring message. It's not too late to reserve free tickets for you and your guests, so just go to our website at nhww.org. And when you reserve tickets online, you'll automatically be entered for a drawing to win one of five $50 Amazon gift cards. 
Winners will be notified by email and must be present at our Easter in-person services to pick up your prize. You won't want to miss out on this exciting Easter celebration. Kids Zone will also be available during all service times for all ages, pre-K to fifth grade, so be sure to reserve your seats for your keiki in advance on our website. And junior high and high school services at Easter will be available downstairs in Keiki Oka'aina, but no tickets are required. And right after Easter, we'll be launching a brand new message series called What Happens After You Die. To kick off that series, we are super excited to have guest speaker, Pastor Don Piper, author of bestseller book, 90 Minutes in Heaven. Pastor Don was in a horrific head-on collision that killed him. He went to heaven for 90 minutes and will share his experiences speaking live at all of our in-person services on April 11th. Come join us for in-person services on Sunday, April 11th to hear his incredible story of what heaven is actually like. Seats will be available on a first come first serve basis. So be sure to go over to our website and reserve your free tickets for you and your family. Well, that's all the announcements we have for you. Today, we have a great message for you. So wherever you're joining us from, would you join me in welcoming Pastor TJ? Hey, what's up, New Hope Windward? It's great to be here with you today, and more importantly, if you're new, it's great to have you here with us. My name is TJ, I'm part of the teaching team here, uh, and if you are just joining us, you're doing so on a, a special Sunday. It's called Palm Sunday. Now, if you're new to church, say, what's Palm Sunday? Uh, basically, it's a special uh, Sunday that starts Easter week. And Easter week is a really important week uh, for people that are Christians and follow Jesus. And I, I guess I was trying to think of an analogy, and this isn't perfect, but it's kind of like when people have like birthday week, you know what I'm talking about? Except in my house, my wife likes to do birthday month. Is that even a thing? It is in our house. Okay. But it's kind of like that, except even more important. This is the center point for everything that we talk about. I mean, when you read through scripture, this week is just critical. And so we're going to dive into some of that today. But uh, as we started out, I just wanted to kind of start out with just a question. And here's my question for you. Have you ever had something that you were looking forward to? Maybe a trip or an event or something. And, and when you got to the actual event, it wasn't quite what you expected. You ever anything like this happen to you? Maybe it was like a job that you were starting or when you went away to college or maybe marriage was just different than you thought it was going to be. Has this ever happened? Uh, I remember for me, one of the times that this happened that was, it just sticks out is actually when I went to Israel. Uh, when I went to Israel, this was in uh, 2012, and I was like thinking like, man, this is going to be mind blowing. Like I'm going to go all these like real places. It's going to just be ancient, all this learning. It's going to be just incredible. Matter of fact, uh, the truth is, is the trip was good, but it was just different than I thought. Here, I'll show you a couple just photos real fast. This was me in Jerusalem, um, you know, right? That's looking down on the temple. This is on the Mount of Olives. And believe it or not, um, this is actually where Palm Sundays, when Jesus comes into Jerusalem, this is the exact place. See, for me, one of the things I love is, um, you know, the Bible's not just full of stories that are meant for inspiration. They're actual events that take place in actual places. It's so like when you dig around here, you'll find the artifacts. It's just, it's really, really cool to me. Now, obviously, the most beautiful thing in this picture is what? That's right, my hair. Can you see it? Boom, there it is. I'm no, just kidding on that. But parts of Israel met my expectations, but other parts caught me completely off guard. See, like what? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, the first night I was there, I was in a place called Tel Aviv. And Tel Aviv sounds very ancient, but allow me to show you a picture of Tel Aviv. Check this out. Does that look familiar to anybody else? I mean, it's almost like Waikiki. I mean, I imagine for some people that come into Hawaii and they're expecting like, oh, palm trees and hammocks and just empty beaches. And then they get to Waikiki, they're like, uh, I'm sorry, what? You know what I'm talking about? Just kind of kept me off guard. And matter of fact, even some of the ancient sites, check this out. This was one of those ancient sites. Looks a little bit different, right? Now, with that being said, that again, the trip changed my life. It was awesome. But my point is, is it didn't just, it didn't happen quite like I expected it would happen. And one other cool thing, I forgot I had to show you this too. Um, we, we got this place where we got baptized in the place that Jesus got baptized, where John the Baptist was doing the baptizing. They make you wear these kind of like white robes. So I'm going to look really weird in this picture. But... I saw the coolest thing on the wall there, right in the middle of Israel, on the other side of the world. Check this out. Can you see this? 
It says Hawaii Pigeon. There is full on a pigeon Bible verse cruising in the middle of the desert on the wall over here. I loved it. I just thought you would enjoy that. Hey, my point is this. You know, when you get to these experiences, you think one thing's going to happen, but oftentimes something completely different happens. And I bring this up because I think that if we were to put ourselves in the modern day guys or back in ancient times when they were experiencing Palm Sunday, this is exactly how they thought. They had an expectation of what was about to happen, what Jesus was about to do. And what he ended up doing was actually completely different than they ever saw coming. So the next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and they went down to the road to meet him. Now, the reason they were doing this is this is how you would welcome in a king. And so they were saying, finally, the king is here, the Messiah has come, he's going to throw off the Romans and he's going to give us freedom. This was the royal treatment. But watch what happened. It says, Jesus, he found a young donkey and he rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. Now, here's where the expectations start to change. Everybody is expecting this conquering king to come in. And when kings rode into cities, usually they did so uh, in power and full of like grandeur and, and just strength, the showing of their strength. But what's interesting is when Jesus rides in, he rides in on a young donkey. And it's important to pay attention to this because um, this is not what they're thinking. They're expecting a war horse. And it's not a war horse. He comes in on a donkey. Matter of fact, I brought some pictures just because in Hawaii, not many of us have a donkey cruising in the neighborhood, right? It's not like oh, I see a donkey every day, right? Now, when you look at this one right here, what you got to know is that the donkey, it says it was a donkey's colt. Or in other words, out of these two donkeys, it was the young donkey that he rode on, the little one. Now, here, that donkey still looks kind of big, right? I'm going to show you a, a juxtaposition or a comparison shot of the big donkey right there. So watch this. You see the big donkey? That's what a big donkey would look like next to a war horse. A little bit different, right? And when Jesus rolls in like this, it, it, it's the start of everybody being like, wait, 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 wait. I, I kind of thought you were going to like conquer everything. And it starts to kind of like unpack it a little bit. But isn't it true that oftentimes when God shows up in our life, he can do so in unexpected ways. Isn't that true? And the truth is, at least for me, even after following Jesus for like 30 years, sometimes I miss it. And as a matter of fact, even the disciples missed it. Watch this. The very next scripture says this. And his disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. People miss it. I'm guessing that in our lives, if you were to look back, if I'm talking to the Christians watching this now, maybe even for you, there's times in your life where you look back and, you know, God showed up, but he showed up in the way that you weren't necessarily expecting, right? You were hoping you would do one thing, but he ended up doing something else. Uh, maybe, for example, um, it has to do with, with finances and money, and maybe you were in a tight situation, and you were just at a time where it's like, man, God, I just want you to provide for me. Can you just, just miraculously send a check or something? And he does end up providing for you, but maybe he gets you an opportunity to have another job or something to come alongside to support your income. And it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, he met the need. It just, it wasn't in the way I was expecting. Or maybe for some of you, it has to do with like a, a career and you're like, oh, I just, I need a promotion. If I can just, if I can just find a way to get promoted, but it actually ends up that maybe God's plan for you wasn't necessarily to get promoted, but actually to go out and start something on your own. I actually know a lot of people in the last year, or last five years actually, that that was their story when God actually moved them into the right place. And so they'll go back and they'll say, wow, God really did show up for me. But he showed up in a way that I just wasn't expecting. And you know, sometimes I think that that's how things can actually happen. I mean, to say it like this, sometimes God doesn't give you what you want. He actually gives you what you need. And can I be honest with you? I think that when a lot of people, when they think about God in that, or when they interact with God, that this happens more than we think. See, sometimes, uh, let me use an analogy like this. Uh, I have a, a one-year-old son. His name's Titan. I love this kid to death. 
But this kid, he has some crazy desires right now. One of his desires is he loves to nosedive off furniture. That's what he wants to do. And he wants daddy to be all about it. But daddy's not really all about it. Not because I'm trying to be cruel to him, right? No, because I'm actually like, son, there's a better way to go about this. Or I have something else that's actually going to benefit you versus what you want to do right now in this season. And although that might be a very simple analogy, you got to remember that one of the primary ways that scripture describes God is as father God. And as a father, sometimes this is going to happen to us. He's not going to give us what we want. He's going to give us what we need. See, what the people at Palm Sunday wanted is they wanted a king to come in and just throw off the Roman rule. Just set them free instantly. But instead of a conquering king, they got a suffering one who would lay his life down on the cross and reconnect us back to God forever. See, the thing about it is, in this story, there was nothing wrong with Jesus. Jesus was exactly who he was supposed to be. See, they had such a picture of what they wanted Jesus to do that they couldn't see what he actually was doing. And I think that you and I run into that same danger constantly in our life. I'll just give you maybe just one or two more practical examples. Um, the example of this, I know some people that are in a phase they're dating and they're dating a lot in that and it's like, okay, God, I just, I want you to provide for this relationship for me and they just can't seem to like figure this part out and then what God might do is he might give them like six months where there's just no dating and in those six months what he's trying to do is actually work in them to help them become who they're supposed to be for their future marriage. But if you're so focused on the dating aspect and the, the, the action of, is there stuff going on, is there that, then you could actually miss what God might be doing in you. Now, let me just be absolutely clear, okay? Uh, I got married in my, my mid-30s on that. I am not saying that the reason that it's not working for you is you need to work on yourself and something is wrong. Or like, I'm, I'm not, that's, this is not a blanket statement. What I am saying is, it might be worth just saying, okay, God, what is it that you're up to? And I want to make sure that I can really see what you're doing and not just get so clouded with my expectations of what I want you to do in the here and now. See, I'm going to switch to a, a different story that reiterates the Palm Sunday principle, if I can. And I'm going to go all the way back to the, the festival that they're sharing, uh, celebrating, which is Passover, right? And when it goes back, remember, this is when God rescued them out of Egypt, the whole 10 plagues thing and everything. And I just want you to watch how God interacts with the people, even from the very beginning. Check this out. It says this. Now, when Pharaoh had let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was near. For God said the people might change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. In other words, this is what the scripture is saying. What God is basically describing here is the people are about to leave Egypt and they're about to go to the promised land, the land full of milk and honey. And there was a straight shot how to get there, a really direct route. But God didn't take them that direction because they weren't ready for what was coming yet. And so instead, he takes them down a different route to prepare them to be able to handle the promise when the promise comes. And what happens in that space is it brings them through this entire process. Now, the thing about you and me, at least when you look at our society as well, is we aren't really people that like to take a long time to do things anymore. Isn't that true? Matter of fact, we kind of live in like a little bit of an instant gratification culture, right? Like we have access to everything. We text and it responds back instantly and we just communicate so quickly or it's just faster than ever before. And it's interesting, even if you just rewind a couple decades, like, do you guys remember these things right here? Anybody remember that? Yeah, it's called a VHS. I know some of you guys are trying to Google this and figure out I've never seen that in my life. But this is what movies used to come like, you remember? And you remember when you'd like want to look for a particular scene in the movie, you'd have to like rewind it and fast forward it and like watch the numbers turn and it would take like five to seven minutes to rewind a whole movie. You guys remember this? Yeah, it was just crazy. And then when DVDs came out, it was like mind blowing. Like I can press one button and that whole process is done. This is awesome, right? But you remember even when DVDs, how you would go rent movies? You go to these magic stores like this. Yes, you guys remember these. 
There's, there's still, I think, one left in America somewhere. But the whole point of it, you would go and you would have to actually drive down and then rent the movie. Today, if you want to rent a movie, what do you do? Just click a button. It's like done. Stream straight to your home. It's just like instantaneous. And I'm not saying that any of these things are necessarily bad, but what I am saying is what's begun to happen is that we've started to live in a culture where we're just people that just everything's got to be quick, and we have a hard time sometimes when there's a process moment or when things don't really come like we expect them to. It causes different things. I mean, just think about all the places that this can happen. Uh, one would be like um, with credit cards. We have access to money instantaneously right now. We can buy things just by saying like, Alexa, buy me in the, if you have the Amazon Echo in your kitchen. And it's just everything's going on that. And the question is, is in doing all those things, sometimes those things aren't always the best, are they? Sometimes when we rush the process, they can lead us to different decisions that maybe we would have done a little bit different. I mean, have you ever made a career choice that you're like, oh, wow, like, ah, if I would have slowed that one down a little bit, I think I would have done something a little bit different. Because sometimes it's not just getting to where we want, but it's actually going through the process necessary to take us there when the right time is. And sometimes in order for that to happen, it comes from different expectations. Let me illustrate it like this. If I was to draw this out visually, you have... Egypt, and what God was about to do is to take them to the land of milk and honey. But in between Egypt and the promised land was this desert, this desert that they had to wander through for a time. And this desert had a purpose. It was the process that was meant to form them so that they would be ready then to step into the promise. And in the same way, what I want to suggest to you here today is, you know, oftentimes we are just like the people on Palm Sunday that say, God, I just want you to do it now. We're just like the people that are back in Egypt saying, God, can you just take us the fastest route? And what we don't understand is that God is often up to a way bigger picture than we ever realize. And sometimes the way in which he goes about things in your life is going to surprise you. Now, it's good for you. It may not be exactly what you want in the moment, but it is what you need. And in that space, that's what allows for this true transformation if you can trust him in the process. See, even back in this story, human nature takes over. I mean, if you look at the scripture from Numbers, it says this. Then they sent out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, and the people became what? Impatient. Why? Because of the journey. So I want it now. I just want to move it now. It's not what I expect. I just, I want to get there and, and go as fast as I can. And because of this, man, these people incurred so many problems that actually prevented them from actually getting into the promised land, actually getting to the place that God had for them to do. And here's the thing, they're on the right path. But sometimes the path that God takes us down and the path that you and I would choose otherwise are different. And my question to you is, in your life right now, are you able to recognize what God's currently up to? Are you able to see it? And if so, are you embracing these seasons, or are you trying to run from it? If I throw back this, I'll say it like this. As many times, we want the promise without the process. That's, that's the truth. I mean, I'll, I'll confess that myself. I, I want the promises. I want everything just to come easy. But oftentimes, God's more interested in who I'm becoming than anything that's going on around me. And He will shape me through these different things if I'll embrace the process and not just get so hyper-focused on the promise. You know, I'll give you a couple examples of ways that this works in real life. So let's just get a little practical on it. Um, I know a lot of people that they, they really want to focus on building a healthy family or a healthy marriage, if they will. And maybe they're just praying, God, I feel like you promised this to me, and I, I just want everything to get right. There's a lot of tension in this space, and I'm not really sure how to go about it. And we just want God to do like, what a, a friend or a pastor I heard called the Disney swirl. You ever remember those Disney movies? That like, and then they just change like that. The truth is, is that's not usually how it happens. Usually God takes us through a process that would change us. So maybe for you, if it's a, a marriage problem or family thing, maybe God will give you an opportunity to like be part of like a, a counseling thing, to just start doing counseling. Like that sounds miserable. I don't want to do counseling. I just want everything to be fixed. I get it. I mean, I've gone through seasons where I've done counseling, and you know what? It wasn't fun, but it helps so 
much. It transformed me as a person. And maybe for you, that might be the process that he's taking you through. So you may say, well, I already did that, and I've been doing that for like two months, and it might be that God keeps you there for six months or even a year. The point isn't how long the thing goes. The point is, is if that's what you feel like God's telling you to do, are you embracing the process, or are you trying just to shortcut your way to the promise? Other examples that are uh, practical, and I'll share it. Like I, I shared a little bit on that money thing. I just want to tease it out a little more because it was a personal story for me. Uh, I remember when I was in a spot, I ended up in big debt um, because I was self-employed and I wasn't aware of certain taxes, so I just got hammered for thousands. I was praying, God, I did this for you. Will you provide? You always have. Where's my check? No check. New job. Extra job. Two-year process. And can I tell you, it was not fun. But in this two-year process, guess what happened? I learned how to steward money like I've never learned to steward money before. And because of that, now in the seasons when I'm married and I have a family, I can actually steward what God's given me and handle the promise in that. Had I not gone through the process, I wouldn't be ready for that. I mean, if you don't believe me, if you're not a church person, even just try this. Just, just Google stories of some of the guys that win the lottery. Some of the guys that win the lottery, I read one story in particular, they won like 10 to 20 million or something, and uh, within 10 years they were bankrupt. One other story, same similar thing. I think they won like $8 million. And then within a certain time frame, they were back to riding the bus. Why? Because they were in a place where all of a sudden they got what they really thought that they wanted, but without any of the training how to steward these different things. And without this, you can't handle the promise in that as well. And for many of us, what I just feel is that, you know, what we've got to become a people that are, are really good at not just focusing on his promises, but also the processes that he takes us through to get to the promises. See, the reality was, is when we go back to Palm Sunday, God was about to rescue the world through Jesus. He was about to transform everything. But it wasn't going to be the way that the people thought it was. And had they had eyes to see and ears to hear, they would have been able to come alongside this huge moment in Passion Week, this huge thing, and, and really get to the thing of like, oh, God's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. When instead, because Jesus doesn't meet their expectations, they actually throw him off. I want to say one other thing is, you know, we start to kind of like come to a close a little bit today. Uh, you know, when you think about the process thing, the other thing that can happen a lot of times in these seasons is it can be really, really mundane. So what do you mean? Maybe you're in a season where God has you working a job that just is, it's just a job. And you just, and whenever you pray about it, you just feel like he's still got you there. And it just seems very, very ordinary. And because it's ordinary, you think, well, this isn't anything magic. So I just like, God, can you just get this over as fast as you can? Or maybe you're in a season where it's just hard with your kids and they need a lot of time. And it just feels so like the same day in and day out. See, in these moments, what we've got to be able to do is to not necessarily just try to like get through this, but learn how to actually embrace this. Because the reality is, is in a lot of these ordinary moments, God works extraordinary things. If you can just learn to make the most and actually lean into that to embrace it. I wanted to uh, ask this question, which I already did, but I just want to just formally put it. The point of this message today is this is what is God doing in your life right now? Not necessarily what do you wish God was doing, what could God change, but when you look around your world around you, what is he doing right now? What is he doing in you? And for some of you, you might say, like, honestly, I don't know. If that's you, here's what I want you to do. This week, if you're in a small group, which I'm hoping many of you are, I want you to just to take time in a small group and just have a conversation with somebody and just, just process it out loud. Let them ask you questions and, and just figure out like, okay, let's just talk through what do I think God's up to right now? Or maybe for you, what you'll do if you're not in that, you can just take a journal. And if you were with us for our Encountering God series about a month ago, we talked through different ways, but maybe you could just sit with God and just journal out thoughts of like, God, I, I'm trying to figure out what it is that you're doing. Can you help me? And I'll tell you this, I've had so many people that they've actually encountered God in that. I remember one woman, she was telling me when she uh, first came to faith, um, you know, she was upset because she had so much tension in her marriage. We were just talking about this today. 
And she was sharing and she's like, I just, I didn't understand. And what she didn't realize was that God was about to do an incredible work in her family. Matter of fact, her husband wanted nothing to do with God whatsoever. And he wasn't one of those people that just like, nah, God's not for me. He was like, I am against God and I can tell you exactly why. What happened as she started to change her heart towards him and she started just making small invitations to him, actually even coming to church, this guy had a radical encounter with God. I mean, just radical. But it came when she started leaning into that and started focusing on that versus like, I just don't understand, God, all the chaos and everything else. Can you just change it? It became more of like, okay, what do you want me to do in the middle of this? Does that make sense? See, if you can answer this question, there's a follow-up to it. If you know what he's doing in his, your li life right now, I want to ask, are you actually leaning into it or are you fighting against it? The quickest way through desert seasons to the promised land is to embrace the desert. It's not to endure it. It's not to look for a shortcut. It's to say, God, I'm all in for the process. I'm all in for what you want to do in me and through me. And as long as it takes, let's do it. Like, let's go. That kind of heart he takes and he will mold you and shape you into who you're supposed to become. But you can't overestimate the power of just embracing ordinary things. You know, earlier I, uh, I showed you guys this picture. You guys remember this? This was in Israel. This is one of the things. And, oh, okay, it kind of looks like that, uh, you know, tour buses and whatnot. Do you know what this actually is? This is taken right outside the garden tomb. Many people think this might actually even be like where Golgotha is, the place Jesus was crucified. It's a bus stop now. Isn't that crazy? The most ordinary thing you could ever imagine, the most extraordinary thing in all of history took place at. And I think that that's a big picture of a lot of times how God operates. We try to make it out into these grandiose things when he says, you know what, I'm going to work inside your life every single day. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times he's going to show up in big power moments and, and great stories, and we love those testimonies. But at the same time, he shows up a lot more every day that we don't even realize because we haven't developed eyes that can see. And that's what I want to pray for us today, that we would be a people who would start to become ones that aren't just locked in our expectations of God, but more so in a people that's like, okay, God, I want to see what you're doing in my life and the world around me. And I want to cooperate with that, even if it looks a little different than I thought it would. Or even if the way I would want to go, you want to go a little bit different. I'm in to follow you and I'm in for whatever you have for me. I mean, next Sunday is Easter. And the thing about Easter is Easter is the one time that people, for whatever reason, will say yes to coming to church. Now, for us, we're not really concerned with how many people come to church. We're concerned with, man, there's going to be times that people are going to start their relationship with God for the very first time at Easter. We know this because, you know, we're, the church is almost 20 years at this point. And we've seen time and time again how many people's stories start at Easter. And you know how we talked about a lot of times, uh, we live in a time where, like, um, you know, it's oftentimes that people, like, well, with God, it's like, oh, I don't know if I really want God, but the reality is, is everybody needs God. You know what I mean? What we want to do in this time is we want to be people that will extend an invitation. Because for some, they'll show up and they think they're just going to sit in a theater, or maybe even just watch a video or just a streamed message, thinking this is it. But for whatever reason, that's the day that God's chosen, that He's going to encounter them through something very ordinary. And so what we want to do is we want to be um, really diligent and just people that are willing to just extend invitations. Now, it doesn't mean you have to sh shove this down everyone's throat. But for me, what I'm just going to tell you is I, I used to be really passive when it came to this. And I've I shared some of this story with you guys before, but I used to think, oh, I just don't want people to feel inconvenienced or everything else. And I had a friend who, who came to an Easter on an invitation and they encountered God for real, started their relationship. And they came up to me after and they said, hey, how come you never invited me? Like, I, I just don't get it. I thought we were like friends. And I just remember thinking like, oh man, like, I just didn't want you to feel awkward, you know? And for him, it just didn't make any sense because it's like, you may have thought that's not what I wanted, but man, Jesus is exactly what I needed. And you know what, guys? I knew that. I just, I got in my own way. 
And so what I want to make sure we want to ask um, that you would be willing is if all of us would be willing to at least just invite two people to Easter this year. And there's a variety of ways you can do it. You can do inviting them to come with you. That's the easiest because if you're doing in-person church, uh, like it's always easier for someone to um, go with someone else to an event, right? Like, or if I'm like, hey, I'm going to church. You want to come with me? For somebody else, like a friend saying like, um, hey, do you mind if I invite myself to come to church with you and sit by you? Like, it's just a lot more awkward. You know what I'm saying? So extend the invitation. It's okay if they say no. Again, we're not trying to force anything, but we're just trying to like open the door because you never know what God's going to do. The other thing you can do too, uh, we'll get back to this part in a sec. Uh, you can do it even digitally. So like this is from Facebook. I took this straight off of my account on that. And what you can do is there'll be the, the link that'll be down there. You can repost graphics. You can even share the actual service and you can send it to family members and friends. There's that little button down there that says share. That's how you can do that. And so to be honest with you, it's never been easier to invite people to Easter and the history of church, in my opinion. And the reason why is we can do it in person where people can come together and we've got plenty of space, or we can do it digitally where people can even go to church in their homes. It's awesome. And so I just want to really have us as a community take advantage of that because we are about people encountering God for real. And here at New Hope Windward, we just, it's one of the biggest things that we celebrate because it's what God celebrates. And we want to make sure that we make the most of every opportunity in doing so. The other thing I did want to say um, is if you are free next Easter weekend, you know, we really could use um, some help if you're free. And so what we're looking at is basically... We need people that will be willing to help in ushers or ticket collectors, help to clean things because people are really nervous with COVID. So we do an extra good job just to make sure. And so if you're free at all, can you do this? Can you just text new helper to 45777? Okay, 45777. No matter when you're watching this, where you're watching this, this will work. But basically, uh, it'll just allow um, just different people because there's so many people that come. We just need extra help in this season to really make it a place that they can uh, feel comfortable and really free to encounter God um, however he wants to do that that day. Sound good? So 4577, new helper if you can text that. But aside from that, uh, I just wanted to close in prayer. And so just kind of bringing everything together because I really do believe that what God's about to do in our world and all around us, if we don't develop eyes to see it, we could totally miss it. And so I want to pray that he would do that because to be honest with you, it's not something we can do on our own. We need his strength to see what he's up to, to learn to hear his voice and to follow him with everything we've got. So if you can, would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? And so Father, we come before you today, God, on Palm Sunday. And first, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for being a good father. Thank you for giving us what we need, God. Thank you for being willing to send your son Jesus to die on a cross and to do so in, in a painful manner, in a way that people didn't even understand what he was doing for them, and yet it still was 100% for them. And we just want to thank you because your love always goes first like that. You've gone first for each one of us. And today, God, we want to come um, with our expectations, Lord, just be honest. A lot of us have certain things that we're, we're hoping for or dreaming about, whether it's family or career or personally or for people around us. And Lord, those things aren't necessarily bad, but more than our expectations, we want to know what it is that you're up to in the world around us, that you're up to in our own life. And we want to develop eyes that see that. And then God, when you put us in seasons where we're in the process for a while and it seems like the promise is so far away, Holy Spirit, would you help us to be faithful? Would you help us to be people who can stay in it and cooperate in it? God, for my friends here that are really questioning what you're even doing in their life, God, I pray as they would spend time talking with a friend or even just journaling or just praying, would you communicate with them so clearly? Because we know, God, you're so intentional and we just want to really be able to be in line and in step with you. And then, God, for all of us, this week when we're walking around, 
Lord, I know that there's people that you've been working in their life and that you've been reaching out to them in varying ways. And part of maybe your plan for them is that we would extend an invitation, that they would be able to join us in an Easter space where you'll encounter them. And so God, would you give us the eyes to see the right people or even now put them in their mind, whether they're family members or, or people at school or their coworkers. And then God, would you give us the courage to just extend the invitation, to just at least put it out there, Lord. And then you'll take care of the results. But we want to be really able to do our part, God. And honestly, we need your spirit and your courage to do that. And so would you be with us and empower us this week? Because God, we're looking forward to what you're about to do over this Passion Week. God, we love everything that you're doing in our life. And we just love how much that you are present and that you love us, God. And how much you just continue to be true to who you are. Help us to follow you this week with everything that we've got. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen, amen. All right, well, hey, thanks for joining us here today. Again, make sure to shoot out those Easter invites. We'll throw some social media stuff out there. You can repost it. And we will see you next week as we go for our huge Easter celebration.